creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. unto Jesus. Yes, Lord, we are yours. Thank you, Father, for being here today with us. Jesus, the light of the world. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We honor you. We bring gifts unto you, Lord Jesus. We proclaim you as Lord and Savior kneel down before you, Father. We worship you with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our soul. We worship you in spirit and in truth. Have your way in this service, Holy Spirit, heavenly dove. Move each and every soul to where it is you would have us to be right in your presence. Holy Spirit, be manifested mightily. Do what only you can do, Lord Jesus. Heal, bring new life unto us. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Jesus, most precious and holy name. A scripture lesson from the Old Testament is, can be found in Isaiah chapter 60, verses 1 through 5. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you. All assemble and come to you. Your sons come from afar and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant and your heart will throb and swell with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you. To you, the riches of the nations will come. Our New Testament scripture is found in John chapter 8, verses 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. 
Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We welcome you this morning to join us in giving. We ask that you would worship the Lord your God in giving. We thank God for Christmas. We thank God for the birth of Jesus. And now we wish to worship God in our giving. The Bible says that if we would give, and it will be given unto us at good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into our laps. For with the measure we use, it will be measured to us. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. You may give by mailing your giving in to Wayman African Methodist Episcopal Church, 803 West Olive Street. You may use the app. Givelify, or you may go to our website, wayman-amec.com. Lord, bless the gifts and the givers. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We love you from the bottom of our hearts. We thank you for your wonderful gifts of salvation and the baptism in the Holy Spirit, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving us, Lord, of our sins. We repent this morning, Father, unto you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for washing us and cleansing us. Lord, thank you for all of our families that we were able to commune together, to suck together, to eat together, to love one another, to give to one another, to share with one another. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for all of our families. We thank you for all of those who are here today, those who are not here today, who wanted to be here today, Lord. We thank you for those who have gone on to be with you, Father. Pray for those who are grieving, Lord Jesus. Those who may have just left and those who have gone on long time ago. Thank you, Father, for giving us them in our lives. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord, how excellent is thy name. Words are in adequate to express our gratitude. Lord, we know these gifts were freely given to us. No merit of our own, but just because you love us. Oh Lord, we give to you the only thing that we have ourselves, myself. I know your will for my life is marvelous. So we ask that your perfect will be done in each and every one of us from this day on. Help us, Lord. May your yield, may we yield to you until we are bind together as one forever. Oh, Lord, my Jesus, thank you, Father, for filling us with your love, your compassion, Father. In this season, we look forward to a bright, wonderful 2022. Thank you, Father. For your love and your peace, your hope, your joy, your everlasting life. We thank you in Jesus' most precious and holy name. Amen.
Let's pray. Oh Lord, my God, I need your strength. Speak a word to me and speak a word to your people. Use me to your honor and to your glory. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world. John chapter 1, beginning at verse 3 through verse 13. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that that through him, all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world. And though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children not born of natural descent, nor of human decision, or of a husband's will, but born of God. John chapter 1, verses 3 through 13, the NIV. This is a time of waiting and preparation for Jesus, the light of the world. When COVID-19 was upgraded from an epidemic to a pandemic on March 11, 2020, more darkness creeped in, in all around the world. The world, there was not so much information about co coronavirus, the spread of it, and how to slow the spread of this disease. Nations began to shut down, no travel, businesses shut down, and shelter-in-place orders were issued around the world. We watched a nightmare unfold that brought darkness and death. It began to take its toll on us financially, mentally, and physically. Even Mother Earth began to speak out loudly and violently against the way we have treated her. The climate is changing due to some of our policies, procedures, abuse, and misuse of Earth's natural resources. Then on May 25th, 2020, George Floyd was killed by a policeman, placing his knee on his neck, cutting off his airflow, and COVID-1619 rose from an epidemic of police brutality and racism to a pandemic. All around the world, people took to the streets to protest the unnecessary use of force, racism, police brutality, and injustice. Darkness fell all around the world like a thick pall. Battling two pandemics simultaneously awakened many from their slumber. This year, we have experienced more loss and grief than ever before. The darkness highlighted the absence of the moral and spiritual values of leadership and followers. We search for light amid the darkness. The light shined through the darkness in small glimmers of hope. Hope for faith, safe and fair elections. Hope for justice. Hope for leadership that will be guided by the greater good for the world. Hope for a better tomorrow. And hope that God would intervene and grant us wisdom to win the war against these two pandemics. Our hope was and is rooted and grounded in our faith in Jesus Christ, the light of the world. Here we are. 
here we are on the verge of vaccinating the world and moving towards a more just society. It is our prayer that we can begin restoration and healing through coming to the table of truth, restorative justice conferences, and reconciliation. May our motivation be loving our neighbor and caring for all of creation in a more just and loving manner. In the midst of dark times in our life, will we still worship God? Amid hardship, trouble, and trials, will we praise God? Will we let the light, Jesus Christ, shine through us? Will we rejoice even when we do not feel like it? Will we see God even when darkness is all around? Will we lift up the name of Jesus when our world has been turned upside down? Let's see what our text can teach us this morning. The Gospel of John represents to us the ministry of Jesus Christ. He presents to us the ministry of Jesus Christ. The book details the inside scoop on Jesus' ministry. We are privy to private conversations with Jesus, his ministry to the disciples, and the Jewish feast. The book focuses on the seven signs and wonder that point to Jesus being the Messiah, the Son of God. The seven I am's are iterated by Jesus and their explanation are given in this, the fourth gospel. The gospel begins with the divinity of Jesus and not his human birth. The gospel begins by letting us know, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning, John chapter one, verses one and two. Jesus, the Logos, the word of God, was present at creation and is God. This is the glory of this gospel. The word of God, the Logos of God became flesh. Jesus is God's creative agent and responsible for the creation of all the world. Through Jesus, things were made and nothing was made without Jesus making it. Who God is, Jesus is. What God does, Jesus does. Colossians 1 and 15, Colossians chapter 1 verses 15 through 17 says it like this. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For in him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things have been created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. Therefore, it is only through Jesus that we have life, spiritual life. And that light is the light of all human beings. Yes, there's darkness, spiritual darkness in the world, but Jesus, the light of the world, shines through the darkness. Human beings mistreat one another, do horrible things to diminish the personhood of people, perpetuate injustice, physically and mentally enslave each other, yet the light shines through. Sometimes it is difficult to find the light in the darkness, but if you look long and hard enough, you will eventually see and experience the light. The light shines through in healing, forgiveness, deliverance, and restoration. Healing, deliverance, restoration, forgiveness, and salvation are all divine activity, and Jesus performs these activities under the direction of God the Father. The light shines through the darkness and the darkness cannot, will not, shall not, and has not overcome the light. In the midst of these pandemics, Jesus is at work. Jesus was at work in the bit beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. Jesus is at work amid these pandemics. Jesus has enabled vaccines to come forth. Jesus has shined the bright light 
on discrimination, inequities, and injustice so that we can restore relationships and build more and develop and build more just laws, policies, and procedures. People have been awakened to the wrong and now they have to fix it to repair the harm, to stand up and be the repairers of the breach all around the world. That is how the light shines through the darkness. The world does not comprehend or understand the work of Jesus and God because they do not believe. So God sent a man named John, also known as John the Baptist, to witness to the coming of the light to the world. John was the herald, the forerunner, the messenger, sent to prepare the way for the light of the world. John was not the light, but the one whom God chose to point, to point us to Jesus. John preached, confess your sins, repent, repent. And be baptized with water, a cleansing, signifying an inward change of heart. Baptism is that outward cleansing of an inward new birth. John was sent to testify about the light. John was sent to glorify and identify Jesus Christ, the light to this world. His ministry was to lead people to Jesus Christ, to let people know that the light was coming from God and that people had to believe in the light to be saved from their sins and disobedience to God. To believe in Jesus Christ is particularly important in the Gospel of John because it occurs at least 84 times in this Gospel. There's so much darkness in the world that God sent a special envoy to prepare us for the coming light. This light, Jesus shines through the darkness. John 8 and 12 tells us when Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me never walked in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus is the light of the world and gives light to everyone. John explains it like this in John chapter 3, verses 16 through 20. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only son. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people love darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. This light, this light that Jesus gives shines on us and we accept and believe and are saved or it highlights our sin and coming judgment and we reject Jesus. Let me say that again. This light, the light of Jesus, it shines on us. We accept and believe and are saved or it highlights our sin and coming judgment, and we reject Jesus. The light shines on everyone, and we have to make a choice to believe and accept Jesus as the Son of God or choose to reject Jesus. When Jesus came into the world, even though everything that was made was through Jesus, the world did not recognize Jesus. The world did not accept him as the Messiah, the Son of God. He came as a Jewish baby boy, and his own did not receive him as the Savior of the world. Yet all who did receive him, all who believed on the name of Jesus, he gave them the right to become children of God. This birth is not of a natural birth or human decision or a natural desire for children, but a supernatural birth, a, a, a person welcomes Jesus into their life and they are born again through faith, belief, and obedience to the word of God. A powerful transformation occurs in the life of those who believe. We who believe become members of God's family. 
before our belief and obedience, our sins separated us from God. In Colossians chapter 1 and 21, it says, once we were alienated from God and were enemies in our minds because of our evil behavior. Through Jesus, we have access to God and are God's children. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 18 and 19 said, for through him, we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. The light, the light, Jesus, the light shines through the darkness in our lives and transforms us into children of God when we accept and believe. We are not perfect children. We are striving for perfection. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 John 3 and 2, the prophet Isaiah foretold of the time coming when the people walking in darkness have seen a great light on those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as warriors rejoice when dividing the plumber, plunder. Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 and 3. Jesus is the light of the world. Hark the herald angels sing. Jesus, the light of the world. Glory to the newborn king. Jesus the light of the world. Joy for all ye nations, rise. Jesus, the light of the world. Join the triumph of the skies. Jesus, the light of the world. Christ, my highest heaven adored. Jesus, the light of the world. Christ, the everlasting Lord. Jesus, the light of the world. Hail the heaven-born Prince of Peace. Jesus, the light of the world. Hail the son of the righteousness, Jesus, the light of the world. We'll walk in the light, beautiful light. Come where the dew drops of mercy shine bright. Oh, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, the light of the world. Receive the light into your life this morning. Invite Jesus to come into your life and change you to be the man, the woman, the boy, or girl God has made you to be. The doors of the church are open and the light of the world stands with his arms open wide, ready to receive you into the family of God. Raise your hand. Let us know if today you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you want to invite Jesus into your heart, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, church. Uh, we thank and praise God for you this morning. Uh, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's light shine upon you. Uh, may this season be a blessing to you. Thank God for you. Amen.